Uh, we now check uh, a few applications uh, of um, of uh, compound angles, that is from neck pass papers. So this is a question from neck, and I'd like to, to work it out. Uh, this one carries seven marks for you to just do this. And it's a very simple question. It just requires you to understand this concept. Now, so we have given sine of A is given by four over five, cosine of B is given by 12 over 13. Then uh, where A and B are acute. Now, these are very important information here. Where A and B are acute, determine the values of sine A um, minus B, then turn A plus B. Now, the solution. So, the solution for this, again, we just apply what we have here. So, now it is sine A plus B. Now, sine A, sorry, minus B, which will give you sine of A, okay, then cos of B, this one is a negative, so you have a negative here. Now you have um, cos of A sine of sine of B. So that will be your expansion. Then the second, I think we can uh, just have the two of them together. So the tan of A plus B, again this one will be tan of tan of A. Then you have, this one is positive, therefore this one is also positive there. Then you have tan of B all over then we have one this one is a positive here we have a negative all right then we have turn of a uh, sorry turn of a turn of turn of b so these are your two relationships now most of the time students may uh, tend to make a mistake of just adding the angles here that we have given four over five and uh, 12 over over to remember this is not the value of the angle this is the relationship of the cosine of a certain angle and is given by this then the sine of another angle a is given by that now the way of solving this is very simple we shall draw two triangles because we know these are derived from um, Pythagoras a theorem uh, relationship of a right angle triangle so we shall draw a triangle one for the sine of A, then the second for the cos of B, then we shall look for all the other variables, we shall look for all the others. Then, because we can see we have a relationship here that will involve cos, that will involve tan, so we shall find all of them. So now, uh, now let's have our two triangles, so we can have the first one uh, with the, of the angle A and the second one here. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just draw that. Then you have that, then you have that. Now we can say this one is our angle A and this one is our angle B, right? So you have two triangles. Then, uh, now you can uh, draw the relationship. So we have sine of A is, uh, is 4 over 5. And what is sine? Sine is given by opposite over hypotenuse. So, katoa. So, katoa. So therefore, our opposite will be 4, because it is our numerator, then our hypotenuse will be 5, so you have that. Then we come to B, B is the cosine of B, which will be given by 12 over 13. So 12, which will be our adjacent, then we have, uh, we have 13, so which will be given by this. Then the second step, find the missing values. So basically here our missing value will be what? Will be 3 from the Pythagoras theorem, we know that. Then our missing value here will be, will be 5. Okay, because we know this one squared, 4 squared plus 3 squared will give you 5 squared. Then we know this one squared plus this one squared gives you this one squared. So we have that. That is the first step. The second step is now find all the other relationships. So first of all here we have sine of A is given now by 4 over 5. What is the cos of A? Adjacent of hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. Then we have the tan of A, which will be given by, tangent is given by opposite over adjacent. So our opposite is 4, then our adjacent is 3. Alright, then we come and do the same here. So we have been given the what? The cos of, the cos of B, which is given by 12 over 13. Then we have now the sine of B, because we don't have it. It is 5 over 13. 
then you have the turn of uh, B which is given by opposite of adjacent which is 5 over 5 over 12 all right together so now we have now all the relationships that we need then from there you just perform any uh, very simple mathematical uh, relationship the sine of a minus b is given by sine of a cos of b minus cos of a sine of b but do we have all this yes do we have the sine of a in terms of a fraction yes sine of a is given by 4 over 5 do we have the cos of b yes what is cos of b 12 over 13 do we have the cos of a it is here do we have the sine of b it is here so now replace now the fractions in this relationship therefore our solution will be given by sine of a minus b will be given by sine of a what is our sine of a 4 over 4 over 5 into bracket then we have cos of b 12 over 13 then minus we have cos of a is 3 over 3 over 5 then we have uh, the sine of b is 5 over 5 over 13 so basically so what will we have here uh, that is 2448 um, so we love 48 over 65 minus 15 over 65 Basically, you just take uh, the subtraction of uh, 48 because they have the same what? They have the same denominator, which will give you 33 over 65. And that is the answer. Then for the second one, turn of A plus B will give us turn of A. What is turn of A? 4 over 3. Minor, uh, this one is positive, so we'll have a positive. Then you have turn of B, 5 over 12. Then all over 1 minus the turn of A, 4 over 3. Then turn of B, 5 over, 5 over 12. So we can see. So 4 over 3 plus 5 over 12 will give us 7 over 4 the, num uh, the numerator then you can have 4 over 3 times 5 over 12 then 1 subtract the answer gives us 4 over 9 so 4 over 9 therefore uh, 7 over 4 therefore now you divide 7 over 4 divide by our answer there we get that our answer is 63 63 over 16 which is just basically um, you can say in terms of a fraction we have that or 3.9375 in terms of a decimal and that is it so it is as simple as that so the first step is get the relationship in terms of the compound uh, relationship find two um, triangles uh, in, with regards to your particular angle so you have the first and the second get the other trigonometric ratios then from there you get the other fractions that you need then from there just replace them in this type of relationship and you get your answers let us check another example where now one of them is acute and the other one is an obtuse angle. So now uh, we have another example here from uh, the next 20, 2018. Uh, so you're given that the sine of uh, A equals to 7 over 25, cos of B is 5 over 13, where A is obtuse. Now I said these are very important and uh, B is an acute angle. So determine the value of A sorry uh, a plus b sine of a plus b and cos of a minus b now we know their relationships so the solution again so i'll uh, okay let me just write them down 
sine of a plus b is the same as sine of a cos of b plus now cos of a sine of b then you have cos of a minus b be given by the cos of a cos of b now this one is a negative here so we'll have a what a positive there then again sine of sine of a then sine of b so in our case here basically we are just interested with the cos and sines right uh, so when you're forming your triangle there you can uh, just concentrate on the cos and sine but it is always good to find um, all of them um, yeah so now let's check again we draw the two we draw the two now before drawing for the sign okay let me let me draw this remember our triangles are usually drawn from the right angle triangle but they always also originate from the quadrant so if i was to draw this angle here we have been told that a is an obtuse angle so it is more than 90 degrees so if i had my quadrant if i had my quadrant my angle a will be in this quadrant because it is greater than right it will be greater than um will be i'll be working with an angle greater than 90. so basically what i'm saying is the angle that we're interested is with here will fall in the second quadrant so that is the reason why this word is very important for you to understand where the angle belongs now another thing from what you have looked before uh, when you talk about all students take coffee all students take coffee we are saying that only sine will be positive in this quadrant are we together only the sine will be positive in this particular quadrant the cos and the tangent will be negative by the end of the day it will be negative here all right so any relationship with the value of a that we shall get with this value and it involves the sine or the tangent we shall negate that value because it belongs in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant our value for the tan and cos is negative but for the sine it becomes positive that is why this fraction here is what is a positive angle so that is very important when it comes to this but for b we have been told b is an acute angle so it falls in which quadrant it falls in the first quadrant where all the angles are positive angles are right, together yes now so therefore we can now therefore draw i'm saying we can still now draw our two quadrants knowing that relationship there now so we have the two the first and the second so again uh, we draw the angle a then we draw the angle b okay then we have uh, we say these are right angles now the sign is given by opposite of hypotenuse so it is 7 over 25 the cos is given by adjacent 5 over 13 so we can now find so this one is 12 what about uh, this one we shall have 25 squared we shall have 25 squared minus so that is 625 minus 49 then you get the square root of the answer so it gives you 20 24. so we shall have 20 24. so it's as simple as that so we have this triangle and we have this then we have our angle we have our angle um, given by that so therefore now the sine of a is given by 7 over 25. so we have said we are just interested with the cos and sine because in our expansion here we only have the cos and sines. Therefore, the cosine of A, we have said it will be a negative value. That is the first thing to remember. It will be a negative value because this angle lies in the second quadrant. So therefore, our cos is given by 24 over 24 over 25. As simple as that. Then we come to this. Now for this, we have been given the cos of B which is 5 over 13 and now the sine of b 
Since this one is an acute angle, therefore all of them will be positive. So we shall just have 12 over 13. Then from there, just replace your values here and you get your solution. So sine of A plus B, we shall get sine of A is 7 over 25. Uh, cos of B given by negative 24 over 25. Then you have plus cos of A, oh sorry, uh, cos of B is 5 over 13. Cos of B is 5 over 13. We are here. So the cos of B is 5 over 13. 5 over 13. Then we come to the cos of A. Now we have negative 24 over 25. Then we have sine of B is given by 12 over 12 over 13. So this one gives us 35 all over 25 and 13 that gives us 325 325 now the aspect that we have a negative here we shall have a negative then you have 24 and 12 which gives us 288 288 the denominator is the same 325 therefore uh, so we have 35 which subtracts our answer which gives us negative 253 over 325 and that is your solution again cos of a minus b will give us cos of a negative 24 over 25 cos of b given by 5 over 13 then we have uh, plus Sine of A, 7 over 25. Sine of B, 12 over 12 over 13. Again, uh, so we check 24, uh, 24 and 5, which gives me 120 over 325. Then negative, all right? Yes, so you have a negative. Then you have uh, 12 and 7 which gives me 84, so plus 84 over 325. So 84 minus 120 gives me negative 36 over 325. And those two are the solutions. So now, uh, as I was saying, just note the keywords. When you're told all of them are acute, then your working is direct. When you're told that um, one of them is obtuse, the other one is acute, then uh, be vigilant on that to understand where your value lies. Does it lie in the first quadrant, the second, the third, or the fourth? But this is just an application of compound angles in solving such, um, such problems. And lastly, we shall check now another application that always, again, uh, very much tested in NEC. We shall check uh, maybe the next questions uh, in applying what we have as compound angles. So thank you. See you in the next lesson. Kindly subscribe, share, and also comment.